Hi, I'm Simon Brown, a senior consultant with C5 Alliance. I like to describe myself as a hands-on software architect, and this presentation is about the role of a hands-on software architect in successful projects. Throughout this presentation, we're going to be looking at exactly what being a hands-on software architect means and how an architect can help um, drive a project to, to success. So why do software projects fail then? Well, software projects can fail for a number of reasons. For example, they might be over budget, they might exceed the time allocated to the team, or they might not meet the end user's expectations. Iterative and agile techniques can help solve some of these problems. So for example, by reducing the time between the requirements being defined and captured and signed off through to the delivery of that piece of software, you're more likely to meet the end user's expectations because they've been much more involved in, in helping you produce that piece of software. Again, because you're doing this, you have a much greater transparency on the software being developed. And that means you can track the costs and the budget and the time much, much easier too. So then, iterative and agile techniques can help solve some of the problems typically associated with software projects failing, but they can't solve all of them. Software is quite complicated and it's quite abstract. And it's really easy for software to get things wrong like the non-functional requirements. So you need to build a highly scalable website you build a website that functions correctly but doesn't necessarily scale. Again, these things are quite easy to get wrong. In addition to that, the quality associated with the, the software product or the, or the project might be poor. It might break often, it might not be reliable, it might not be available and so on. So again, there are a whole bunch of other reasons why software projects fail. And while Agile can't solve those, something needs to. On the one side then, we, we, we now understand that software projects fail and that, that, that they can fail for a number of different reasons. The other piece to our puzzle is that software architects tend to have a bad reputation in the industry. And this bad reputation usually stems from a limited involvement in software projects. And that limited involvement can ultimately lead to projects failing. So let's drill into this some more. The first item we have here is, is that large organizations particularly tend to have a centralized architecture team and these are the people that they generally hire in they headhunt and so on and they bring them in they put them in an office elevate them on a pedestal and these are the ivory tower archi architects the thinkers and these people have a great deal of experience and knowledge to to share with other people and they're generally parachuted into project teams when those projects are starting up or when those projects become troubled for some reason now, while these architects can bring lots of knowledge to those projects, they can also very easily steer them off track. And they can do this because they don't necessarily understand the business context in which those project teams are operating in. And also, those centralized architecture teams tend to keep an eye on new technologies, um, advances in design patterns and those sorts of things. And they can bring that knowledge into the project team when sometimes they just don't need it. And again, it takes them off track. The next item we have then is Sometimes teams will understand that they need a software architect and they'll get that software architect in for the first few weeks of the project only. Now, okay, this is when most of the requirements capture and the, bit, the high level design and the architecture is typically done. But these project teams then release their architects after all that work's done. And, and whilst this is effective at, at getting those big decisions made early, it's not effective when during the construction phase, during the build phase, your software development team need to ask the architect questions. So for example, they don't understand a design pattern. They don't understand why the architect has chosen a particular technology or implemented something in a certain way. So once the architect leaves the project, there's nobody there to give the software development team the guidance that they need. And again, that limited involvement from the architect can actually cause a project to fail. One of the side effects of software architects having a bad reputation from their limited involvement is that some teams will just think, well, okay, we don't need a software architect. And Instead, they'll just try and hire the smartest developers that, that they can lay their hands on. Now, this is great because hiring smart developers means you're going to get people who understand technology, who live and breathe it, who can put code together, use the latest technology, use the latest programming language features and so on. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the system's going to be successful as a whole. So, for example, I've seen some very, very good software systems that have, all, that have used the latest technology, the best design patterns, that it's structured beautifully, but ultimately it doesn't deliver on the non functional requirements. The system doesn't scale, it doesn't perform, it doesn't handle the, the volume of data that, it, that it's supposed to. So again, sometimes 
you really do need an architect to make sure that some of these bigger picture things are taken care of. And having smart developers is great, but who's going to look after those architectural things?